Adam, maybe we'll start with you and ask you, how are you feeling today? Well, I am feeling fine today. And I hope everybody is feeling likewise. I'm just real happy to have the chance to be here in Kentucky. It's a wonderful place. I've told my family about such a beautiful place and everybody I have met here is real, what I call real people. And I, I just feel so, so happy to have the chance to be here with you all today. Thank you. Could, could you start off by uh, playing, a, playing a, picking a tune for us? Well, what, what do you all like, a blues or a country? Or Well, I think we'll step it up and go. Thank you, Etta. That's such a beautiful guitar you're playing. It looks like it's brand new. Can you tell us about that guitar when you first got well, it? Well, I really treasure this guitar very, very much. It was given to me in the year of 58 for Mother's Day. My daughter gave it to me, and she had a rheumatism. She was on crutches, and she worked and bought me this guitar. And she said, come on, Mother, I want to take you to town, and I want to get you a Mother's Day gift. So this was what she gave to me in the year of 58. Wow. And I really, really treasure this guitar very, very much. Can you start back at the beginning and tell us about the uh, guitar that you started off playing when you were a child? And uh, Well, when... I was about uh, almost three years old. I was in the bed, I remember. I was in the bed and I heard my daddy tuning up the guitar. They didn't have to say, Eddie, it's time to get up. That guitar was enough to call me up on the floor. So I got up and I would walk through and under my dad's knees and come up between him and the guitar and I'd look over and see where he was noting. And he bought me a tiny little guitar, and he'd set me up in the middle of the bed and laid across, and I'd show him the chord, but I wasn't getting too much sound from it. And I could do my three basic chords when I was three years old. And the only lesson I had was my father. Your father was a musician, was he? My dad played guitar, harmonica and guitar, and my mother also played harmonica. Dad played violin, and he taught me violin, and he'd say, come on, baby, I want you to play violin, and I just, oh, I couldn't stand the little screeching sound, <laughs> but I knew better than to let Dad know I didn't want to play the little violin, so I would, I've sat there many times, and it just gave me creeps, to hear it is squeaking, but still, I played violin, 
and Dad played banjo and my sister played guitar. And I regret to this day that I laid down my violin and quit playing. I wish I'd kept it up, but I bought me another one. I'm still going to take it up again. <laughs> what kind of music did your dad play? What would, could you say about his uh, style? Oh, dad play? played mostly country until we moved to East Virginia. And when we got down there, there was a band made us welcome, came in and made us welcome to that part of Virginia. So the guitars came in and played um, Carolina Breakdown, and that was the first blues my dad ever heard, uh, ever tried to play. I, I never had heard him play the blues before. So he played the Carolina Breakdown, so dad learned that from him. Then dad taught me Carolina Breakdown. So I, I will play Carolina Breakdown. John, maybe we could turn to you, John Jackson, and uh, see what you feel like starting off with here this morning. Well, I mess around with a whole bunch of different stuff, yeah, you know, so maybe give me a little juice, and uh, Can y'all hear that all right? It seems to be kind of weak up here, huh? Well, you want me to just run through a little something here? Huh? Just play whatever you play what something, about, whatever you feel like. Now it's time, man. Put a tune like going down the road feeling bad. That's an old country play, right? Really. Can you hear that humming? Yeah, we're getting a lot of, Rich, we're getting a lot of hum up here. I 
I'm way down in jail on my knees. Way down in jail on my knees. Way down in jail on my knees, Lord, Lord. And I ain't gonna be three years away. They beat me on cornbread and beans. Beat me on cornbread and beans. Beat me on cornbread and beans, Lord, Lord. And I ain't gonna be treated this way. I'm going down this road feeling bad. How are you feeling this morning? Very good, very good. Real glad to be here. Can you tell us a, a little bit about that guitar you're playing there? Well, this guitar here, in 1957, there were two fellas who used to live in Fairfax, uh, and they was working in instruction work, do you know, helping to build houses and all that. <clears throat> so they used to come to my house, putting you every weekend, and one Sunday evening, they left, I guess, about nine o'clock in the evening, and then on Monday morning, one of them come back, said, John, said, we got laid off the job this morning, and said, we don't have any money, and I want to know, would you lend us $50? And we'll let you hold this guitar for a couple of weeks and we'll be back to get it. Well, I didn't have $50. I went and bought it from a boss later. And I went to the bank and got the check cash and I gave him the $50. And he said, now I'll be back in two weeks to bring you $50 and get the guitar. And that's been 40 years and I ain't seen him <laughs> since. <laughs> so I ain't gonna give this up now after all the many years. Yeah, but to come back for it, well, there's no way they'll ever get it back. <laughs> That's how I came by this guitar. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your uh, people and where you were raised. <clears throat> well, I grew up in wide open country, in County called Rappahannock County, Virginia, and what's nice and all was just wide open farm. We had no kind of club or nothing to go to. And uh, of course, my father was a farmer. I've been a farmer for 40 years. And uh, of course, we didn't milk no dairy cows. We raised a lot of beef cattle, apples, and peaches, and wheat, and corn, barley, and oats. And in fact, everybody grew up mostly dancing and pitching horseshoes and uh, playing music, you know, maintaining their own sales. And, that's what we did when we grew up, and sometimes we'd sit around and play songs and sing till bedtime, and then sometimes they'd have a check at game or maybe a card game, and that's the kind of bringing up I had. And on the weekend, most time people would come to play music. Somebody would cook a ham. Some would uh, bring a pot of cook a pot of bean, and maybe cook some cakes and pies and clam down in the ice house and get a dread big chunk of ice and wash the straw off it and bust it up and put them into a 10 gallon milk can, cut up some lemons or maybe make ice tea or ice water. And that's what we did on the weekend. We had plenty to eat and played music pretty much all the weekend. One wanted to dance, good dance, and let's come bringing up a hay. <laughs> did you call those house parties? Yeah, but just call it mostly like, you know, people getting together for playing music on the weekend. Mm -hmm. 
Of course, they had things like house parties too, like this neighbor would have one this way, maybe the next neighbor lived over law would have one that way, and the next week the next neighbor would have it. Sometimes they'd go around a year or more before this first neighbor would ever have another one. And uh, it went on like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when did you start, uh, start out playing? How did you get started? Well, my father, everybody in the family played music. That my father played the guitar, banjo, mandolin, ukulele, and he made these little penny whistles too. He blow it. And my mom, she played accordion and a harmonica, but she didn't play anything but spirituals. And I can't remember but one song that she sang. It wasn't a spiritual, it was a song, but put my little shoes away. <laughs> But my father, he never sang any spirituals as I know of. He used to sing songs of cool drink of water before I die, and he'd sing one about the preaching the big grizzly bear, and then he would sing one about when you hear that cock -a doodle crow, it must be gonna be rain or snow. And I don't know where you got all them songs from. I'm, and which is uh, one just like I told you, he used to sing about I'm going up north and I'm going to pull my britches off and I'm going to dance in my long sh shirt tail. And uh, I just don't know where he got them all at. We never just have no records with them on them as far as I can remember. So, and so there, was no, uh, there was no record player I I at your house? Or? Uh, the record player didn't come in until after that convict, you know, was on the chain gang on this. Um, uh, met at the spring, and uh, after he left, and then these two furniture dealers came up in the country with a load of furniture, was horse and wagon, had these record players you wind up, and they brought one in to the house all one day and told my mom if we have a music box we want to sell you. My father was eating down on the porch, he just had to come in out the hay field, and he told them, said, we ain't got no money to buy nothing with. So they went on back up on the hill and pulled the wagon, the horses underneath of some shade trees, sat down at the lunch. And so when he went back in the hay field, he come back down to the house with a record playing on it. And my mama said, God Almighty, Mr. Hewn, what is that? And he said, this is this muted box your husband run me away with. And she told him, said, bring that thing on in here, bring it on in here. Huh? <laughs> so they brought it in and unloaded and left Made a couple of records that night when he come in from work. She had a record playing on it. He come running in, God Almighty, Hattie, what is that? And she told him, said, that's what Mr. Humes and Mr. Kelly left you, this music box. And he fell in love with it right away. And so, and like once a month, every six weeks, they would come around to click whatever we were trying to pay them on it. And then they would bring just boxes and boxes of records. Whoever made a record long before that time, right up till that date. And my older sisters would buy whatever records we was able to buy. And like 10 cents a piece, a quarter a piece. I don't know which it was then. And that's how we come by, you know, the record player and records and things that come with it. Do you remember uh, the year or about just about the year that that was when you got the record? It was somewhere when 31 or 32, somewhere along in now, huh? I and don't know right till the minute till the day, but I know it was somewhere along in either 1931 or 32, because that road was finished in 32, and the convict had been going for then, and he come got it just before then, somewhere between 31 and 32. And what were the records then that, that you would have been listening to? <laughs> we would listen to just all kinds of records. It was no names on them and no pictures, but it was people like Lemon Jeffers, Blind Blake, the old Jimmy Rogers, maybe the Carter family. It was just everybody who ever made a record near back for now. And so I just don't know who all of them were, but that's who we used to listen to. Huh? And uh, what happened to the family music after that? Did you did you give up any of the old songs that you had sung at home, or or did you? Oh keep no, so we never did give up no song. But 
you know it got tough and tough for people coming to listen at the record players and instead of playing, but we we didn't, and a lot of the neighbors and friends didn't still play it in about 19, I guess somewhere like about 1940 or 42 or 43, and people comes to giving up the guitar because the music shines and want no command for much for this kind of music that I play around now. Huh? And I remember when that Radio Dick, it was some band that called Radio Dick came in the country and he used to bring a ball team out of Washington, D.C. and then he'd bring his dancers was doing the drag and the jitterbug. And uh, that, uh, I can remember when that come in and that thought of, you know, the music coming to die out. <laughs> Edo, uh, tell us about how your music developed after you started to play as a three-year-old. What, what happened? Were you playing at home all the time then like John's people were? You said your dad, you said your dad uh, got you playing the violin and your sister played the guitar? Oh, yes. Then well, what were the situations when you would play that music? Did you, were, were there dances in the community? Yes, or? we would playing for at a Brown Mountain Beach, it was called, and the dancers from Lenore would come out on Saturday night and we went over and would play for them. And that's, we'd play at different entertainments, and house parties, and things like that. Were these uh, square dances or? Square dances, yes. Can you describe some of those, uh, where they were held and what sort of people came? And well, it was were there, just. Were there any good fights or did they just mostly? Oh, no, there wasn't anything but just happy times then. And at entertainments on Saturday night, everybody would, a lot of the people would have a lot of good food brought in, and everything then was free. Just whatever you wanted to eat, it was there. And then after that was over, they'd all go back to playing and dancing, and that would always last until about maybe 1.30 in the mornings, if it was on Friday night, because people back then, they wouldn't dance on Sunday, so they would try to close out about 12 on Saturday night. Were these racially mixed uh, events that you played for? Oh, yes. People got together to, uh, did that mean that uh, black and white people black danced, and white. danced together as oh, well? Oh, yes, yes. It was just like one big family. And that was at Lenore, North Carolina? Right. Mm -hmm. What about you, John? Was, was the, was the, the events, the social events in your community, were they racially mixed or? Most low white men, no white ladies, nobody come down to do any dance. But most low white people, most would come out to mind with men folks. They would come and dance and would play music right along with everybody. Uh, but the white women didn't. Come. No, they never seen them. No, huh? no it's, huh? huh? Play us uh, one of the tunes from that period when you were playing dance music, what sort of, uh... They'd always play, never let your deal go down. There you go.
Thank you. Tell us, tell us a story about the One Dime Blues. Well, the One Dime Blues came into my family by a friend, and he had wandered off and got into West Virginia, and nobody knew where he was. And he got broke, didn't have no money to get back home on. And so he went out and he put this one dime blues together. And when he made enough to come home on, he taught me the one dime blues. Mm -hmm. 